Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to take a look at the very powerful um, merge node which allows you to uh, combine mash networks to create different effects. So we have in this scene we have a plane of 10,000 mash points and then we have 10,000 mash points scattered over the surface of some text in a different network and then we're using the merge net, um, node to uh, go between the two with some you know um, special effects added by a a fall off node and a spring node so creating the effect that you see on the screen and it's really simple and should only take a few minutes so yes let's get going uh, right so new scene here let's create some text and I'm just gonna hit F on the keyboard and then we'll type in our text helps if I spell it correctly and then I think we'll switch to Gil Sands is the font cool so here is our font maybe let's just use the black one like that and then I'm going to create a cube and the cube is going to be a kind of our mash particle the reason I'm using a cube is because it's basically the most efficient shape to put into mash um, it's uh, the repro node is always faster than the instancer when using cubes so there's a tip for you so here's our tiny little cube i'm going to add a texture to it i'm going to give it a let's just say a lambert and then we'll make it incandescent uh, with this uh, kind of blue color and then i'll make a new mash network so I go create mash create mash network and then um, i'm going to say give us fifteen thousand points something like that so you get a line of mesh points like that then what we're going to do is under the mesh settings so mesh settings here i'm just going to middle mouse drag the uh, input mesh on so we've got our if i just hide the text here we've got our fifteen thousand points being scattered over our text and you'll notice that there are some areas that are really sparse and some areas that are really dense and the reason for that is that um uh, by default the scatter just picks faces at random and there are obviously more faces is where the font is more high resolution so they get more points now the way to get around that is to just check this box down here called scatter uses face area which will mean that we will take the area of the face into account when we scatter so here we have our 15,000 points I'm going to make our original cube slightly smaller something like that cool part one done uh, so the next bit is I'm going to grab the same cube and I'm going to create another mesh network and I'm going to have again 15,000 points and this time I'm going to have uh, no distribution on the linear here but I'm going to create a random node for position and I will turn off Y and we'll have minus, ooh, I don't know, 40 and 40, something like that. And that's created a 40 by 40 plane of these 15,000 points. Uh, now they're in the wrong place for us, so I need to create a transform node. So I'll just add a transform, and then I'm going to uh, uh, right click on create, um, container null, c controller null, and click create. And I'm going to grab that, and we're just going to move our network kind of down here a little bit, something like that. And here's where the fun starts. So uh, we will, uh, on our first mass network, we're going to add a merge node. So we just do add merge node like that. And then we need to hook up a child node, which can either be a waiter or another merge node. So we just grab our second waiter and then um, shift select our first waiter, go to the merge node and hit connect waiter. So that's connected our second waiter. And then when I change the strength, you'll see that our um, our word form uh, kind of uh, disintegrates and goes and um, inherits its positions from the first network. You can add positions and you can also subtract them, but we want crossfade here so you can see what's going on here. So with strength set to one, I can go down to the fall off objects down here and then right click and uh, choose create. And you see that um, if I just scale this up um, and move it over our letters, I can use a fall off object to form our points, which is in itself a very cool effect. Um, we don't want a circular fall off object, we want a cubic one. So I'm just going to select the fall off object here, change the shape to cube, and then I'm just going to start scaling this to get what I want. So I want something that's quite thin, but I want something that's quite long, like so. So I can move this down over here. I'm going to shrink the inner zone something like 0.1 and I'm going to change the um, fall off ramp to something smoother. And then as you can see, as I move this through our objects, um, 
our letter starts to form. I actually I need to have this wider because I want the inner zone to completely encase the text so that at least the letters are forming. Just make that slightly wider still and until I get what I what I get what I'm after. So I'm just making it 1.5. Okay, so you can see that the kind of the word is forming and then um, it dis it disappears when the um, when the fall of object leaves the word. So I want it to, uh, once I pass the fall of object through, I want it to st uh, the letter to stay formed, and that means um, well, first of all, I need to animate it passing through the object. So let's set a keyframe on frame not one actually. Let's set a keyframe on frame ten, and then on frame sixty, let's set a keyframe at the bottom of this. So let's just make sure we. It doesn't matter where we go really, we can just finish something like here. So the keyframe there. And then on the fall off object itself, we just need to change the mode from normal to add. And then when I rewind and play this, our fall off object moves through the word and uh, the word is formed. So a um, few, uh, few stragglers here, um, and I think that's just because I need to increase the size of my inner zone here. So if I just change that to two like that, and then rewind and play. Better, nearly there. Okay, so um, I just might again increase the size of my inner zone slightly. I just need to make sure that basically um, the add mode uh, is adding the strength as it passes through, and I just need to make sure that every point gets enough strength so that it um, completes its transition from one network to the other. So I can actually I can hide my uh, second mash network here because I don't actually need that anymore, and I can just play this through again. And then we get our nice tidy finish. So that's what we want. Okay, so um, now I can uh, add a let's add a spring to this animation. So I've got the first mash node mash network selected. That's the one with the merge node on. And I can just go add spring node, and then I'm going to add some um, random uh, some variations. This is random variation to each point, so that when I play this back. Each point kind of like gets a slightly different amount of spring, and that's going to give us a kind of wavy resolve. So when I uh, rewind this, you notice that some of these points look like they've actually already set off, and that's just because the fall off object up here is starting too low. So I'm just going to drag that up slightly further out of the way, and then just set key. And I'm just going to yeah, once I um, step forward and back, just to reinitialize the animation. Um, see that we've now got our flat plane. So that's cool. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm just going to turn on the, the text object and then I'm going to frame up a camera. So I'm just going to go uh, perspective new, I'm going to make a camera aim and I'm going to make the camera look at, uh, where's the camera's aim? If I just grab that, it's here. I want it to be in the middle of the word. In fact, I can do this in the orthographic viewports, it's much easier. So let's place that here and make sure I'm looking through the right camera. So let's have it look in the middle like so. And then if I go down here, um, okay, so uh, I'll just change the, um, I'll just change the field of view, something like 24 and move the camera in slightly and then what I'm going to do is just animate the camera so I'm just going to grab the aim here and I'm just going to frame this up I'm going to <clears throat> just uh, change my render settings so that I've got um, uh, something more a bit more widescreen um, so there you go, whoops. Um, right, now if I, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna keyframe my camera and my camera here. So if I just get a keyframe on frame one, like so, and then I'm gonna skip to the end, let's say that's frame 75, and I'm going to move my camera over here, instead of the keyframe. So you notice that the letter form is off center at the moment. So I'm just going to, if I rewind, I'm gonna set keyframe on the aim here, and then on frame 75, I'm just going to move the aim over. Uh, so to keep this uh, framed properly, so kind of nice lazy camera work. Um, okay, so you notice that we're um, 
uh, kind of getting too close to the, the type here. Um, I know this isn't strictly MASH, I'm just going to uh, quickly fix the camera basically. So here's the camera here and I'm going to go to um, visualize and create editable motion trail here, uh, which will create an editable motion trail for our camera and then um, as well, you know what, I'm just going to move this over here and um, if I turn on uh, show in tangent and show out tangent for this, I can grab the tangent, move it around, and then I'm going to grab the out tangent on this one and move that around just to make the uh, animation, uh, just to keep it so that the camera is at the same distance away from the, the type, but basically, uh, something like that maybe. Then if I look through my Persp camera, um, yeah, so frame zero, we've got that, and then frame 75, which would be the end of our animation, we've got that. So, okay, so looking cool. Um, now, I can hide the text, and I can hide the, um, I can hide the fall off object, and I can press play. And there we have our transition from one MASH network to another MASH network. And yeah, so at this point we're done. So obviously you can animate the fall off object going from the bottom to the top if you wanted the transition to be the other way around. And yeah, go nuts, you can do anything, obviously. So um, this is also, it's pretty powerful to, to combine effects of one network with another, say if you're using the audio node. Um, maybe if you're lucky, we'll do a tutorial on that as well. So um, yeah, quite cool. Um, I hope, you've, uh, hope you've found that useful.